Early evening on the 7th of November 1996, aviation development companies Flight 086, a Boeing 727-200, was en route from Port Harcourt Airport to Murtala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos, Nigeria. After establishing contact with Lagos radar, the aircraft was cleared to descend to flight level 50, which was 5,000 feet above mean sea level. They were also instructed to maintain a heading of 300 degrees, and the flights then reported traffic, and that it was continuing its right turn to a heading of 330 degrees for traffic avoidance. This was the last transmission the aircraft made. Shortly after, the aircraft disappeared from the radar scope, and it was not until 24 hours later that the wreckage of flight ADK086 was found in the Lagos Lagoon. There were no survivors, very few eyewitness reports, and the crash site hinted at such a great impact that there was no large pieces of the aircraft remaining. So what exactly happened to bring this Boeing 727 aircraft with 144 people on board out of the sky? That's what we're going to find out today. On the 7th of November 1996, around 1350 UTC, the crew arrived at flight ADK086 and began preparing for the flight. In the cockpit they had four flight crew members, the pilot in command and the first officer who were both captains, the flight engineer and a supernumerary captain who was undertaking the final part of his training and was the pilot flying for the majority of this flight. The three pilots and the flight engineer had only logged five hours flying time on the day of the crash and this information along with the records showing that they had received adequate rest time meant that it was quickly determined that fatigue was not a factor in this incident. The Boeing 727-200 airframe was an older aircraft having been manufactured in February 1969 and was subsequently registered in Nigeria in July 1995. The aircraft fell under the Agent Aircraft Program, which calls for special inspections and modifications when the aircraft reaches 60,000 flying hours. On investigation, the aircraft maintenance and inspection records were all up to date, with a 75-hour A check having been completed satisfactorily only three days prior to the flight on the 7th of November. Consequently, it was agreed the maintenance status was also not a factor in the incident. The total flight time from Port Harcourt to Murtala Mohammed is around 250 nautical miles or 460 kilometers, and it takes around 90 minutes in total. After departure from Port Harcourt, the flight initially routes northwest across the flatlands of the River Niger Delta, as well as the Bayelsa, Orashi, and Ebdumanom National Forests. Apologies for the terrible pronunciation of those places. The flight path then meets the coastline with the last portion of the flight routing over the Gulf of Guinea before being vectored for the approach into Murtala Mohammed International Airport. This airfield has an elevation of 41 meters and lies approximately 10 kilometers inland from the Gulf of Guinea. February lies during the dry season in Lagos and the METAR, this stands for Meteorological Airfield Report and is a routine aviation weather report of actual observed weather conditions at the airport at a certain time. For the time of the incident, the METAR indicated that the surface wind was calm, meaning it was less than one knot, with seven kilometers visibility in haze, with a layer of scattered cloud with cumulonimbus at 4,000 feet, and a broken layer of cloud at 7,500 feet. In addition, the weather for that given route for the period of time of the flight was reported as fine from sea level to 20,000 feet, with a ground visibility of eight kilometers from 1500 to 1900 UTC. Once the crew were prepared and the passengers were boarded, the crew carried out their start checks and the aircraft was soon ready for departure. They were cleared to taxi and upon reaching the taxi holding point, they were cleared for takeoff. Flight ADK086 departed Port Harcourt at 1552 UTC and were cleared by Port Harcourt Air Traffic Control to climb to its cruising altitude at flight level 240 which was 24,000 feet above mean sea level. Being a relatively short flight, they didn't need to climb higher than flight level 240. And for the majority of this flight, everything was uneventful. As they approached the destination, ADK flight 086 made contact with Lagos approach control and was assigned a transponder code. The flight crew gave a position report 
and subsequently requested descent to flight level 160, which the radar controller did not acknowledge. Descent to flight level 160 was requested again as the aircraft approached 70 miles range from Lagos. And on passing 55 nautical miles range, ADK 086 reported a TCAS indication for opposite direction traffic. This aircraft was crossing its track 1,000 feet below at the time, which caused a further delay to their descent. Now TCAS stands for Traffic Collision Avoidance System, and it's a tool that pilots can use to determine if any traffic in the vicinity of their aircraft poses a collision threat. A TCAS system is an ICAO, which also stands for International Civil Aviation Organization, legal requirement for any aircraft that seats more than 19 passengers and has a maximum takeoff weight of more than 5,700 kilograms or 12,600 pounds. TCAS works by interrogating the transponders of other aircraft and building a three-dimensional map of projected flight paths, levels and speed of all relevant traffic. Based on this information, the system can issue a TA, which stands for Traffic Advisory, and this warning will prompt the pilots to be vigilant to potential conflicting traffic. Or if the aircraft get too close, it can issue something called an RA, which stands for Resolution Advisory, and if this warning is issued, the TCAS system will advise the pilot to climb or descend or maintain in order to resolve an imminent threat of collision. The pilots will act on a TCAS resolution and advisory warning above all other instructions, even if they contradict air traffic control instructions. In this instance, it is unclear if the crew of flight ADK086 received a traffic advisory warning or a resolution advisory warning. Following the TCAS warning, and once the aircraft was clear of the conflicting traffic, flight ADK086 was then cleared to descend to flight level 160, and the flight subsequently reported, leaving flight level 240, before being instructed to contact Lagos radar. On establishing contact with Lagos radar, the flight reported passing through flight level 210 in the descent to flight level 160, and reported its range as 44 miles from Matala Mohammed International Airport. Lagos radar then identified the aircraft 41 miles southeast of the airfield, and instructed it to fly heading of 320 degrees and to descend to flight level 50. Lagos radar then requested the aircraft report its actual heading and flight ADK086 reported that its current heading was 315 degrees in a right turn to 320 degrees. What follows is Lagos radar instructing flight ADK086 twice to maintain heading 300 degrees. Both times the request was unanswered. Flight ADK086 then received a TCAS resolution and advisory warning stating reduce descent, reduce, climb, 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 which prompted them to report continuing the right turn to a heading of 330 degrees for traffic avoidance. This was the crew's last transmission. Among the other expected ambient sounds from the cockpit voice recorder, the high speed clacker could be heard, meaning the aircraft was approaching or had exceeded its maximum safe operating speed. So what happened? Other than a few delayed transmissions, nothing seemed out of the ordinary up until the TCAS sounded for the second time, showing that urgent action was needed by the crew. On closer inspection, the situation actually started to unravel very soon after flight ADK086 made contact with Lagos radar. On being given descent to flight level 160 and having been delayed by the crossing path of the other aircraft, the crew of flight ADK086 put the aircraft in a high rate of descent to reach flight level 160. The Lagos radar controller believed that flight ADK086 had been cleared to descend to flight level 100. So they had then issued the instruction to fly heading of 300 degrees, believing them to be descending to a lower level. Traffic in the area was another Boeing 727 that was on a route eastbound on a heading of 100 degrees, climbing to flight level 160. Because the radar controller believed that flight 086 was below the other traffic, this new heading actually put them on a direct collision course with the other Boeing 727. As the TCAS alert sounded, the crew of flight 086 sighted the other Boeing 727 from the cockpit. And in response to the TCAS alert, the pilot in command immediately took control of the aircraft and continued the turn on a heading of 330 degrees. The other flight crew members present in the cockpit were in agreement that from their point of view, this looked to improve the situation. 
The flight data recorder indicated that for the first 10 seconds of the maneuver, it was initially maintaining a steady and coordinated turn to a heading of 330 degrees. In basic terms, a coordinated turn is a smooth turn in which all the aircraft's control surfaces are all in balance. After 15 seconds, the bank angle was increased to 43 degrees, which is much higher than the recommended rate one turn of three degrees per second, which is around 25 degrees. This uncoordinated turn could only be maintained for a further 10 seconds as the aircraft fell out of balance and the bank angle soon started increasing with the aircraft literally spiraling out of the pilot's control. The pilot in command was wrestling to get the aircraft under control, but the bank angle was quickly increasing and in a matter of seconds, it had reached in excess of 80 degrees. Due to this increased angle of bank, the nose started to drop. To combat this, the pilot in command pulled back on the controls to raise the nose, also whilst trying to reduce the angle of bank. But this increased the g-force on the aircraft and caused them to enter a high-speed stall, sometimes referred to as a maneuver stall. Once the aircraft entered the stall, it continued to roll into the inverted position and the nose dropped towards the ground. The vertical g-forces on the aircraft and its passengers were now reaching 8g with the speed rising to 490 knots. Even under this massive strain, the crew continued to try and regain some control. And during the final moments of the flight, the aircraft was showing signs of recovery, with the G-forces reducing to 2G and the bank angle stabilizing and starting to reduce. Even with these efforts, they did not have sufficient height to make a full recovery, and the aircraft continued in its nosedive before impacting the lagoon. In the subsequent report, it was determined that the aircraft experienced excessive vertical acceleration of up to 8.4 G. To put this into perspective, astronauts experience up to 6 G on entry into the Earth's atmosphere, and no normal human can withstand more than 9 G without being assisted with a G-suit. We can safely assume that the last 50 seconds of this flight must have been quite simply terrifying for the crew and the passengers alike. So what was the conclusion of the investigation? The first finding was that one of the contributing factors in this incident was the loss of ICAO standard separation between the aircraft involved by the radar controller. This happened because the controller incorrectly believed that he had cleared flight 086 initially to flight level 100 and then to flight level 50, putting the aircraft in his mind below the level of the conflicting traffic that was passing through flight level 150. As we know, this was not the case and flight 086 was actually at flight level 160, meaning that the aircraft were on similar level and heading and posed for a collision risk. In terms of the standard separation that was required, the aircraft needed to be separated by a minimum of 1,000 feet vertically and five nautical miles laterally. Seeing that Flight 086 received a TCAS resolution advisory alert meant that the other traffic must have been within two nautical miles laterally and 600 feet vertically for this to occur, showing that their separation did not meet the minimum separation standards. Further to this, the radar controller who advised Flight 086 to turn right onto a heading of 320 degrees and they gave the other aircraft a heading of 100 degrees. It was agreed that on initial contact with Lagos radar, the aircraft should have been given a heading that would have turned the aircraft to the left. It was also noted that there was poor communication and coordination between Lagos approach control and Lagos radar. The second factor in the conclusion of the investigation was the pilot in command's decision to continue the turn to 330 degrees in an effort to avoid the conflicted traffic, as they determined this was an error in judgment. In addition, the avoidance maneuver completed by the pilot in command was mechanically too stressful for the design of the Boeing 727-200 aircraft. The notified load factor for this aircraft was 2.5 G, which was exceeded by some amount, and that the load of 8.4 G that was placed on the aircraft would have caused significant structural damage even before the moment of impact. The main recommendation from this incident was that air traffic controllers must be made to adhere strictly to laid down procedures for air traffic separations and coordinations between all the air traffic control units. But as of the time of recording this, this incident remains the fourth worst air crash 
to have occurred in Nigeria. If you found this video interesting, it'll be really appreciated if you could drop a like or a comment on the video. If you have any questions or suggestions for other incidents you want to see covered, please do also put those in the comments below. And if you want to be kept up to date with all my videos coming out, please do consider subscribing. With all that said, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.